welcome to my channel. I'm so happy that you are here. My name is Skye if you are new and today we are bringing you our DIY faux fireplace. I am so excited to share this with you guys and to share the process from start to finish. This project only costs us $70 which is incredible and I'm telling you it has upped the cozy factor in our bedroom by like 110%. We are absolutely loving this. We cannot stop staring at it. It is just so beautiful. Today's video is a collab with my friend April over at the Southern Farmhouse. April and her husband are also fixing up their home and are constantly sharing so much inspiring content, amazing DIYs, and decorating tips, and all the home stuff. You guys are going to love her. Make sure you go and check out her channel, give her some love, and I will have that linked in the description below for you all. She is actually going to be sharing a video today where she's featuring her top five favorite DIYs and I cannot wait to watch it. Now I'm going to give you all a quick close up of our fireplace and then we're going to get into this tutorial. We are just so pleased with how this turned out and you guys can definitely expect to see some mistakes that we made and some lessons that we learned to give you guys the best tips on how to make this DIY fireplace in your own home. To get started with this project, I went ahead and removed the TV that we had just mounted up here. We're actually going to have to take off the mount and raise it a little bit now that we're building this faux fireplace down beneath it. Um, but I took that off and I'm going to go ahead and start with removing this trim so that we can get the faux fireplace flush against the wall and you don't have a, this little trim piece sticking out. Uh, and then we're also going to remove this cable jack. Uh, just going to take off the plate, shove it back in the wall, we'll tape over it, and we'll put the faux fireplace over um, it. We actually don't use cable and uh, just stream everything right now. If you wanted to, you could always relocate this. If we ever needed to, we could tear this faux fireplace out. It's not going to be a permanent thing. Um, the way it's going to attach to the wall, it will be removable um, if we really needed to. We're going to be using these deck screws, uh, mainly because it's what I have left over. <laughs> uh, and then also because of the head that they've got, um, you're able to get a good grip and it, it's able to drive through the uh, 2x6s easily um, and into the, the studs and you don't really get any slipping or anything. So good for precision um, since they're longer screws. Um, but uh, we're going to use these just again, they're the right size and uh, we've got them left over so save where you can. You can build this to whatever dimensions you need to. We built ours the whole length of this angled wall. Um, so I'll share our dimensions in case you want to replicate this exact same size. Um, but again, you're welcome to do it any size, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, whatever fits your space. Our first boards are 48 inches tall. So we've taken 48 inches um, and both of these panels will be 48. And then we took a, a board across the top and this one was 52 and a quarter, which is the length of our uh, angled wall right here. So this is 52 and a quarter. Next, we're going to install this to the wall. It's just sitting there right now. We're gonna attach this to the wall. Then we're gonna go ahead and mount the mantle and then we'll get to do the inside next. Here's the mantle. We cut the top piece here to the same length as the top board. So that's 52 inches and a quarter. We uh, are going to go ahead and screw it in along the back here. You could do pocket holes if you wanted to, uh, but I'm gonna just go ahead and screw it down in the back. I'll cover those holes and then we'll paint it. And then Sky's gonna have decor up here, so it won't be a big deal. Um, and then we've also got some corbels that we'll put down below that will also help take some of the weight. Uh, but this is, this is where we're at. just installed the backing board that we're going to put the wood slices on to make it look like a fireplace. Uh, so I just use half inch plywood and I cut it out 
to fit inside of the frame of our fireplace surround here. Um, so I've cut that out. This is 41 and a half inches by 42 and a half inches, uh, the plywood piece to fit inside of here. And once I installed, or once I got it in, I put two screws in into studs just to hold it in place. And then I went around the border and did a few finishing nails as well, just to make sure that it's pretty solid in there. We're gonna go ahead and build a frame inside of here that will be the fireplace and that's where we will put the wood slices inside of. Last night I finished installing the trim and so we've completed the fireplace now uh, as far as construction goes. So we framed out inside of the fireplace where we're going to have the wood slices. Uh, Sky actually found this kind of an angled uh, design on Instagram from one of our friends on Instagram and uh, so we went and went ahead and did that instead of just uh, coming up and doing a 90 degree angle over. I really like how it looks. I, I think it's good. Um, I'll be honest, I struggled a little bit with the angles at first, trying to get that just right. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys kind of what I did and uh, you know, just in case you decide to do something like this and it helps you out. But essentially, these two angles need to match to meet 90 degrees, right? So I can go from here back to horizontal and have it be level. Um, so what I did was I mitered these. This is actually a 29 degree angle, 29 degree angle, 16 and 16. Um, so those are the, the cuts that I got so that I had the right pitch and rise right here from this piece. And then I was able to go back horizontal and have it be level and then did the opposite coming down here. Um, so still again, 16, 16, 29, 29. I painted our entire plywood board black. And the reason being is you put these wood slices on here, you're gonna have you know, obviously some space in between them since they're not gonna butt up perfect. And the black just imitates kind of the shadow that would happen inside of a normal fireplace. Um, with You see with our one downstairs, those of you that have been around a little while, we have actual full uh, log slices inside of there. And in between the space of those is black because of you have no light coming in because it's closed off, right? So we did the same thing here, painted that black, we'll do the wood slices, and then everything from the trim over, we're going to paint white. I'm gonna go in and caulk all of my seams to give it a nice, finished, sleek look. And once the caulk is dry, then we're gonna go ahead and paint it, add the wood slices, and then we can go ahead and patch the wall here, and I can remount the TV and we'll get that back up here. So I've just laid a little bead of caulk inside of this gap that was created. So you, just to smooth that out, I'll get a little bit of water on my finger and you can either do it by hand or there are these little caulk tools that give you different uh, angles and you can smooth out the caulk with those. I typically just use my hand and so I'll smooth that out the excess here. And I'm actually, I'm gonna caulk all of this together as well so it'll look smooth, but you can just kind of keep going here. And again, it looks bad with the white on the wood, but we're actually gonna paint all of this white. So once I get it smooth and it dries, we'll paint it all and you'll never know that that's caulk. Now that the caulk is dry, Chad is just going in and getting our first coat of paint on the fireplace. We are using Sherwin-Williams Pure White and it's a super paint, so it is a paint and primer mix, so you don't have to do any primer ahead of time, which is so handy. We're probably gonna need at least two, if not three coats. You can see here, it's not giving us um, full coverage, of course, just with one coat, but it looks amazing already. As you can see, we do have some holes here from the screws where Chad fastened these boards to the wall. We were kind of in a rush this morning when he was going through and caulking everything. So we're just going to go in with some extra caulk or some wood putty when this is all finished. And uh, then we'll just paint right over it. So not a big deal. We've got but two coats of paint on the mantle and the surround and I think it looks so great. It does match the walls so we are trying to decide if we cream it up just a little bit or if we uh, just hang tight, wait for the paint to dry, do one more coat and then add a little bit of distressing. So stay tuned for that but right now we are getting ready to add on our wood slices. Chad actually cut down a tree that had fallen in our backyard 
not too long ago so he used some of that wood to create these wood slices you can do the same thing or if you want you can buy them on Amazon or at Hobby Lobby or even sometimes you can find them used on Facebook Marketplace. We're using Loctite construction adhesive uh, so it's just a tube of caulk we're going to put a thin coat on the back of each piece I need to do a little bit more there um, and then We'll push them down against the board, hold it for about 15 seconds so it stays in place and move on to the next piece. Here you can see that I decided to go ahead and just go down with the slices so that I could hold them in place with that bottom piece against the carpet and that seems to be working pretty well. You can see some smears from the adhesive. We are doing this for the first time as well so we're probably going to have to go in with a very, very fine paintbrush really tiny one and um, just touch up the black over the adhesive it seems to be drying pretty light so there's a chance we may not even see it but that is an option so i thought originally that i was going to try to get kind of creative with my placement of these slices but now i'm just like whatever i can do to get them to stay on there but with all of that being said i think it looks so good and i cannot wait until all of these are filled in so that i can pull the camera back here and show you guys what it's looking like it really looks so cozy I would recommend using a chalk paint if you plan on distressing it. We weren't sure if we were going to distress it or not at first, and so we just used paint that we had left over, which had a satin finish. Uh, with that satin finish, when you sand it, you actually take off some of the glossiness in spots, and so you end up with kind of a matte finish around where you've sanded. And with that, it can look kind of silly. So what we had to do was go back in, and I used a little bit of a poly, um, polyurethane, and just did it very thin coat over the spots that we sanded, which helped blend everything together and give us back that gloss finish that we sanded off. When using a chalk paint, you won't run into this issue because it has a matte finish and it's designed to be sanded. Y'all, we are so happy with how this project turned out. This is probably one of our favorite DIYs that we have ever done. It is just so beautiful and we really cannot stop looking at it. I am so happy that we decided to go ahead and add a little bit of distressing here to the wood. Again, if we were not trying to keep this on a really tight budget, we would have probably gone out and bought some new chalk paint. I would definitely recommend using chalk paint if you are going to be distressing your fireplace. However, we were just trying to use paint that we already had. And speaking of that, you can kind of see in between the wood slices, just ever so slightly, there's a little bit of adhesive that is showing through just from the um, wood sliding. So we learned a lot while we did this project, and I'll just go in and touch that up with some black paint. But again, had we not been on a budget with this, we would have just gone out and bought some clear adhesive. We do still need to hang the TV. We bought a different amount than what we have right now so that we can still be in the studs but hang that TV centered over the fireplace and then I'll have decor on either side. So I just kind of threw a few things together so you guys could get an idea of what the finished product would look like. But you guys, we are just loving this so much. I wanted to share these gorgeous candlesticks with you guys. They are so beautiful. They are new arrivals to our online interior decor shop called House and Home, and I will link those below for you guys, but I really think this ties together the blacks that are throughout our room with the blanket ladder and some picture frames as well as some of the hardware in this space. 
These are so classy and elegant and they just tie everything in together so nicely. All right, friends, that is a wrap for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you do decide to do this DIY in your own home, please let me know. I always love to hear what you guys are up to. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can see more weekly videos from our channel. I hope that you guys have an amazing day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.